it would be probably useful for me to, to, to kind of go through this thing, because I'm still trying to discover what happened. I, I feel uh, still a little lost and bewildered, and I don't quite get it. And, and that's, a, that's a common thing for me in my life, is that I, like somebody, like some things, I mean, just politically, like I can't get how people don't see that that politician's a liar. You know what I mean? I don't get it. And so for me, if I was going to write something, the concept of the title would be how I got into Scientology and why I got out. As a little kid, I'm talking about even before I could talk, I can remember being interested in people, really interested in people. And uh, I was pretty shiny and everybody wanted to, you know, pick him up and all this crap and I didn't like that. And, uh, but, and I could see people. I, could, I felt like I could, I understood who somebody was pretty well as a little guy. And, and, and I didn't have any kind of, I might have had some judgment on it, but I didn't have a condemnation like, oh, I just thought, okay, that's dad. Not just daddy, but oh, okay, that's that guy. And that's Uncle Gino. And uh, this is this guy at the party as a three, four-year-old kid looking around. And at a certain point, I think, certainly before first grade, I became very, very interested in who am I? Not just, you know, oh, that's that guy I know, but I, was, I had some kind of a perception about a person. And so I, and as a little kid, I remember, because the way I could get how I perceived the people in front of me, whether it was accurate or not, it was, I believed it was true, was kind of by looking into their eyes and, and saying who they are. And so I remember as a little kid looking in the mirror, looking in the mirror, not, and like really not looking at how do I look, looking and trying to say, who am I? And I, I would say, who are you, who are you? You know, as a five, six year old kid, I remember, eight, eight years old was pretty intense. And, uh, and I never got it. And I just thought, well, I guess that's the life condition that you, you know, it's, it's, it's too hard to, to self-perceive. So this was a question that, that was always, you know, and then I went up and you know, as I was growing up and I played the fool and did normal stupid things and drugs and whatever. But uh, it was always something that was in the back of my mind and I was always on a spiritual journey one way or another, you know, either some new age shit, not, never like, not a lot of organized religion by the time I was 14 or something, I'd kind of lost interest in that, you know, but I would read a lot and even to the point where as a 21 year old kid, I mean, I remember I was into this spiritual teaching of this one guy who was originally teaching in French and I, I, I learned French just so I could read it in the original French, you know, so it was important to me, but it was all based on who am I and it kind of, I guess that Greek know thyself type of philosophy. So. Somehow I got into Scientology, which was um, Bodie Elfman uh, was in my acting class. And my acting teacher, who's a big uh, disseminator, Milton Kitsellis, was uh, ranting about some shit, and he was, and it, which was pissing me off because it was wasting class. He was like, nobody, ah, you guys are auditioning me or something. He was pissed off and he wanted more un unmitigated just adoration and he wasn't feeling like he was getting it and uh, and in the middle of his tirade I was sitting there like first thinking who are these fucking people that are not you know flowing the correct amount of attention to the master and then I then I and I looked and I said I wonder if I am and I said do I trust Milton and I said you know what I really don't and that was kind of like a weird thing. I said, well, I don't. And I thought, uh, do, who do I trust? I said, well, at least my parents. No, I don't trust them. <laughs> and I was looking, I didn't trust anybody in the room. And then I had this realization is I don't trust myself. And so in Scientologies, I found my, my ruin. I found my own ruin. And uh, for some reason, because I thought, oh, well, let me try and trust somebody. Let me try and trust Milton, which is what he was yelling and crying about in this whole big speech. And I thought, well, I knew he was a Scientologist. So I said, Bodhi, I said, give me some book on Scientology. 
I was doing a scene with him. And, oh, yeah, and he was this nervous little kid at the time. And uh, so he gave me this big fat book called What is Scientology? A lot of pictures. <coughs> and so I took this book <coughs> and I read it. I read it. I think I stayed up mostly of the night and I read the thing. I mean, you know, I don't know if I got it word for it. I didn't clear all my MUs for sure. But I got through the thing. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, okay, if that's true, fuck, I'll, I'll go clear. I'll try that. That sounds fine. So I, call, I gave Bodie the book back the next day. I said, <coughs> take me to that big castle thing. I want to I I check this shit out. So he's always very excited, you know. He brings me in, and uh, everybody's all excited, and they've greased the path because, you know, I've been on TV and shit. And uh, everybody's really nice. And I, I figured I want to do this Purif thing because I'd done drugs, and I could feel them in my body. And I read the thing, what the Purif's supposed to do. I said, you know, I always... I felt I had felt at that point like I hadn't done drugs for 10, 15 years, and I thought that was one of the biggest mistakes I'd made in my life. And I thought if this can really take that effect away, because I felt that it lost, I had lost some of the shine that I'd had by, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't a drug addict, but I was a drug indulger, and uh, so I go there basically planning on doing the Purif but they've got to give this tour, and I must have gotten there at 10 in the morning, and I swear to God, I'm starting to go nuts. I've done tests. I'm on the cans with some lady. I'm like, fuck me, can I just buy this course and let's get going, you know? And then they do this, uh, you know, thing, and they, can, they give me uh, my personality test, and I was all on the top of the thing, and they're still telling me that I'm fucked up. And, and I'm like, look, and they want me to do this. Finally, they go through the, I mean, I must have been there eight hours. I'm ready to pull my hair out. And they say, uh, uh, you should do uh, some little course called Ups and Downs. I said, look, I'll do the course. If I can, can I just do the Purif thing? Yes, yes, yes. And you have to do the TRs and objectives first uh, or with it. What's that? That's this course that kind of, I said, fine, just let's go. So I buy the course. I said, you know, I've been here. It's now it's like 8.30 at night. And I said, can I start? Because, and I had to get a little oral surgery. So let me do something. I came here for some Scientology. All I got was all this, everybody's selling it to me. I never got to do any. Right, because I wanted to try the shit, and uh, and uh, so now it's 8:30, and I say, okay, uh, you know, they say, well, you can start your TRs course. You'll do the TRs, you do the the, um, and the TRs are these communication drills. Then you do the Purif where you clear all the drugs out, and then you do the auditing, which is called objectives, which is like this stuff where you walk across the room and touch the wall and all this kind of shit. And supposed to, the, the end phenomenon is firmly rooted in present time. I said, that doesn't sound bad, I'll do it. Okay, if you can deliver that, cool. So, uh, so I said, well, give me some Scientology, for Christ's sakes, I've been here since, what, nine hours or something, getting nothing. So they say, okay, you can start your uh, TRs course. So they, I go in and I do this thing called an M7, which is basically Bodhi, and the supervisor are kind of helping me clear the words through. And I, the first thing I ever did in Scientology was read Keeping Scientology Working, which is a pretty heavy uh, uh, bulletin. Yeah, explain what that bulletin says. Well, it's that uh, basically is that Scientology, it's, uh, well, it's, it's a very interesting bulletin. At first, it's, it's, it's updated. So you're reading the updates. I think it was written in 1965, and it was updated in 70 and 75. And those updates are before you read the actual bulletin, and the updates are like L. Ron Hubbard just going bananas. This thing is true. It was true in 1965. It'll be true forever. If you just follow this, Scientology will never fail, and it will take over the universe, and will save all mankind, and we're the only hope for the world. So just if you apply this one policy, everything will be fine. Now, in the bulk of the fucking policy is stuff of, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy, you know, that if you're in Scientology an inch, you're in an ounce. I mean, uh, you're in for the rest of your, you know, this is the billion-year contract shit. This is the heavy Scientology. We are the only hope for mankind, and whether you get it or not, it's the truth, and we're not here to, to placate you. We're here to try and save the planet, and we're only, they're the only hope for mankind, and so this is no game. So that was the first thing I got. I said, okay, you know, we'll see. I couldn't say, you know, I believe that, but uh, 
it was an interesting, bold claim that made me say, okay, all the more. Is this shit really that good? Let's go. So here I am. I bought my little TRs and objectives and my Purif. And, uh, and I said to the supervisor, because now by the time I finished that, it was 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, when do we start? You know, she said, when can you come in to start the course, to finish up? I said, you know, let's start tomorrow. I said, I can be here 7 in the morning. I said, well, we don't start till, till 9. I said, you know, I've come here to do something. I've been here all day. You guys say you got a product, you want it, you know? So she came in at 8 o'clock for me. So I came in, and I just started. And I read all my shit in there. And, uh, and uh, sounded good. And the first exercise is a thing called OT TR0, which is basically where you sit three feet apart from somebody. You cannot have any, any thinking mechanism. And you close your eyes, and you're totally relaxed. But there's another person three feet in front of you doing the exact same thing. And the exercise is to be in communication with that person and your environment but fully the key word is confronting which is he defines as facing without flinching so without thinking anything like if I'm thinking I'm doing it with you I'm thinking okay Mark he's got that beard and he's probably hiding by then I'm flunking because I'm thinking instead of just being there yet without any thinking and so I have to be able to be, and you do this, it says, until you get a major stable win, okay? So I say, fuck it, okay, here's my first Scientology shit, and I'm there with some whoever, and I'm sitting there, and I'm facing him without flinching, and I had a major, major stable win. What I did, according to Scientologists, and I don't have any other nomenclature for it, so it would work for me, but I went exterior. So in other words, uh, the concept would be your Thetan, you, your soul, whatever you want to call it. That's who you are. You're not the body. I'm not Jason Begay. Jason Begay, it's like, it's like buying a new car. I'm the driver of the car, okay? So basically, I went exterior, and to get back to the beginning of my story, I felt, for the first fucking time, the biggest win in my life. I knew who I was. That question that I'd been asking since I was cognizant. Who am I? I knew who I was. And this was huge for me. I said, wow. And this is not even that fucking auditing stuff they talk about. This is just some fucking, you know, some thing. Yeah. And I said, shit, that's awesome. So I was blown out of my socks, happy. Like, I, and I, I, I mean, I was like, oh, so that's who I am. You know, because I knew I wasn't this thing, because I sometimes would have this personality. Sometimes I was a phony. Sometimes I was, you know, you never know if you're real or not, you know? But then there's those moments when, so it's like, who are you? You know, and I could see I could create effects on people and stuff. This is all this growing up. I mean, it was really interesting. Why would this person like me? You know, I knew why I liked them, but why did they like me? Well, you said back in class that you didn't trust yourself. Why didn't you trust yourself? I didn't know who I was. So I go down and I say, okay, I want to buy this clear thing. I'm going to do that because that's enough for me. I just go right there. No reg ever had to reg me. As a matter of fact, I used to reg the regs. They would fucking run because I, I'd do things to them, you know, and stuff like that. I fuck with them. I like doing that. But at any rate, so I go to the reg, I say, I want to do this thing. And I figure it's going to be like, you know, between five and ten grand. You know, because the Purif thing was a, like 1100 Friggin' clear thing, it's going to be more. But I figured, what the fuck, I had a couple of bucks saved. And I said, what? well, I buy the fucking, they, they tell me the price of the thing. And that's another thing. You know, the way they, they just can't say, you know, you know, oh, yeah, the clear, it's 1150 you know, it's like they, 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 they just have to. They're not used to somebody just coming in and saying, let me get that thing. So that was hours and hours and hours. And of course, Bodie, you know, is like he's in there with me and he's my FSM. And at that point, you know, he's going to get 10% and he's excited because, you know, he was broke at the time. And uh, at any rate, it was like 50 grand. So within three weeks, uh, no, within three days. And I probably had 60 grand in my name at that point. I plopped down 50. I said, let's go. 
That's a huge commitment. Well, and so that, that's, everybody fell in love with me, and David Miscavige called me, and all the, everybody, but they started, you know, you know, he wrote me a letter and all this shit. And, you know, everybody's got all this excitement about me. And then the, the other thing was that part of the reason it cost 50 grand also was because they said, uh, you, you know, training. I said, what's fucking training? And they said, you mean I can't do I just thought you sat there, you held those cans. I'd done it in the interview. It sounded easy. I say, uh, and if it's going to be that great, and I remember reading what clear is and all that sounds pretty fucking good. And all I'd done is sat there and I knew who I was. That's all I'd ever, which is probably the biggest win I had in Scientology was on that first day. At any rate, so I go, uh, uh, I go to, uh, they, 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 they sell the, the training. I said, what's that? Well, you learn to be an auditor. I said, listen, you know, I'm an actor. I'm not an auditor. You know, that's cool. You know, but blah, blah, and they're trying to get me to do this thing and buy a fucking e-meter. And I said, you know, 3,000 watt for a, that fucking thing? It looks like a fucking transistor radio. And, uh, but I'm like, oh, man, okay. But I trust them. I figure, you know, because they're delivering a thing. These are good people. You know what I mean? And, and I'm also looking at these people, and it's these decent people. They're decent, and I'm trusting. So, and they are. And, uh, and so they sell me the train. They tell me, finally, the only reason I bought the train, they said, it's half the wins. Oh, so you, in order to get the, you, the wins of the auditing and really going clear, you have to be trained. I said, well, then give me the training package. So I bought a class five training package, because they said you had to be trained as, as trained as you're clear. And I said, what's well, a clear guy? So a class five. Now, you should know that a lot of people fall for this sales thing, and there is probably, I would guess, my guess as conservatively is, there is probably $500 million, is my guess off the top of my head, of unused training that has been bought. People buy it, but they can't confront it. They can't face it without flinching. Okay? Me, I'm a class five auditor. I fucking did it. I liked it. I thought it was cool. And I actually got a lot of wins out of that shit. So that was part of another reason why people liked me, because I was actually doing it. I didn't mind going on. I would quit. The, I'd say, I don't want to go on that audition. I'm going on course. You know, I was getting, I was here to go clear. I figured I can do this in about five, six months. What the fuck? You know, let's go. And, and I basically did that. You know, I'd stop to do a little bit of stuff to pay the rent. And, and, but basically, I was, I was in the org from 8 in the morning. I had my own auditor, and she just audited me all day. I got all the other PCs off her fucking line, and I just went clear. Well, I actually went through my grades. It turned out I was a past life clear. That's why I was so able. And uh, Well, explain what that concept is of <laughs> past life clear. Well, what is that? Oh, dear God. Past life clear. Exactly. Well, I, in other words, you know, I was born in 1960. Scientology uh, was developed in 1952. But LRH was doing uh, Dianetics. <sighs> I'm having a moment. <sighs> See. This is part of the moments of, of, of coming out of Scientology, for me at least. I, 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 would, I think it might be something common to a lot of people, but there are moments where you just feel a loss. And it's not a loss of, I miss Scientology by any stretch, it's a loss It's a regret of, 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 of having invested so much in something that is empty. And, uh, and so there are these moments, and I just had one, where you just go, 